computer. Great. All right. Well, today we are joined with Kevin and Sandy Barner, and they're joining us a few thousand miles away in Estonia. And yeah. so I just want to just welcome you today and uh, just to let you bring greetings to everyone uh, watching or listening today. Hello, Faith Assembly. Yes, and Faith Assembly in New Cumberland, yeah. Pennsylvania. Pastor Josh, thank you so much for just making this time for us. We are really blessed, and I think we officially met you on a Zoom call. I think yeah. that's where we first met you <laughs> yep. maybe a month ago or thereabouts. But thanks for reaching out to us. We are so thankful for your kindness that you're extending to us today. Absolutely. And we're trying to just to be creative in ways that we can connect with our missionaries, hear how they're doing and hear what God's doing in their midst and then how we can pray for them and partner with them. So we're just a great, grateful to have you guys on here. And so you're in Estonia. So uh, what does that look like right now? What is your situation there in Estonia? Are you guys shut down just like the rest of the world? Yeah, we're, we're pretty much shut down, although... Um, We've only had like less than 1,800 cases here. Okay. So, um, so yeah. it's not a complete lockdown. Malls are closed, but restaurants are open. You know, yeah. Yeah. stores are open, but the borders are closed. So yeah, they are. Yeah. nobody can fly in or out yet. So. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Our lives have been pretty much normal, uh, mm -hmm. but I have to say that our normal outing is to the grocery store. That's basically <laughs> our normal outing. But mm -hmm. we're thankful that uh, our restrictions are uh, not as severe as, yeah. as in some countries mm -hmm. could be. Yeah. And churches are opening this weekend. Yeah, this weekend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, opening great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, here there's, there's some, depending on your region and where you're at, I mean, some churches are beginning to open and some are thinking about opening we're we're in that thinking about stage of you know maybe a few weeks out just yeah. beginning that process and that plan of what that what that will look like and right uh, yeah. so yeah um tell us about estonia you know first of all maybe your call to the mission field or you know how did that come about what were you, were you pastors were you just going about your daily life and you know what did that call to missions look like well, we've been pastors. Actually, we just celebrated uh, this past December our 40th year in full-time ministry. Wow. Uh, and uh, the 23 of those years were in the Pendel District. We are both from Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, I always uh, communicate a little bit about my background. I'm from a little town called La Trobe, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. You've heard of La Trobe. It's uh, infamous for a number of reasons. It's the home of Arnold Palmer, of course. Uh, many don't know that it's also the home of Mr. Rogers. Okay. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. There you go. And, uh, also, a notable fact about La Trobe, Pennsylvania, it is where the banana split was invented, if you can oh. believe it. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, Sandy is from also maybe... Yeah, I'm from Acme, which is uh, about 10 minutes off the Donegal exit of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Okay. So, although Kevin has a lot of uh, those um, interesting things for his hometown, Acme means the highest point. So I'm actually from like close to heaven. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Wiley Coyote, Acme. I just think of the Roadrunner, you know? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, true, well, Pastor Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that too. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I actually um, felt a call to missionary uh, life, to missions. When I was a, a pretty young girl and missionaries would come to our church and they would show the slides, you know, in the turntable that would go around and mm -hmm. I would just be fixed to the screen. Wow. Just, um, God had done something to me in such an early age that it, it's all I wanted to do was be a nurse and marry a missionary. Mm. I did it, actually graduate as a nurse. I haven't used that for many, many years though. Yeah. But, um, of course, in my young years, I thought I would marry a missionary, but of course, I am a missionary. There you go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we started out in our, uh, in our service in Pendel when I graduated from Central Bible College in uh, December of 79, uh, 1979. Okay. We were youth yeah. pastors for two years uh, at Jeanette Assembly of God. 
then uh, became associate pastors at South Hills Assembly of God in Bethel Park, a, a larger congregation. Our mentors were Robert, Pastor Robert and Miriam Owen from Wales. Mm -hmm. We served with them five years, and then we planted our own work in okay. Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, oh. uh, New Hope Assembly of God, where we served and, and uh, bought property, built a new facility for 16 years. Okay. We served as lead pastors of New Hope Assembly. Uh, amazing experience. It was really uh, years of learning how to really shepherd the flock of God. And then uh, we answered the call to missions, as you can see, a little bit later than most did. We entered missions mm. when we were 46 and 47 years of age. Mm. So had two teenagers at that time. Mm -hmm. Our first assignment, uh, we were the lead pastors of the International Church in Moscow, Russia for seven and a half years. Oh, wow. Amazing experience. Uh, mm -hmm. People from about 60 different nations in our congregation. An amazing experience. Uh, cold, very cold in <laughs> Moscow. Wow. Mm -hmm. And from there, when we felt God was releasing us from Moscow, we went to Bangkok, Thailand, and pastored the English-speaking international church there for nearly six years. Oh, wow. And that was quite an amazing experience as well. Yes. Uh, it, was, it was a little different than Moscow. Um, in Moscow, we had probably three quarters of our congregation were university students. So we became mom and dad to a yep. lot of kids from around the world. Many of them. Oh, that's great. And um, in, in Bangkok, we saw a lot of Iranian Muslims come for various reasons to Bangkok. Some of them were uh, fleeing you know, persecution, even as Muslims, some students, some business people, but they would come into our church and you know, the first church they've ever been into, yeah. they've only been to mosques and they would sense God's presence and yes. it wouldn't be long till they would renounce Islam and, become Christians and become baptized. And that's yeah. just a thrill of our heart that God has put the Iranian people deep in our We hearts. baptize a lot of Iranians that yeah. came through our church in uh, yeah. Bangkok. And we are to this it's day so close to them and love and miss them and pray God continues to work <laughs> with them in their situation mm -hmm. that they're facing. Wow. Uh, while uh, Pastor Josh, we were pastoring that amazing church in Bangkok, Sandy and I were feeling some stirrings. Uh, that change was coming, but we didn't know what that looked like. Uh, we asked some of our colleagues who are pastors and missionaries in other parts of the world to please just join us in prayer. And out of that, we were invited uh, as the, from the area director to come here to Estonia. We serve a unique role here in Estonia. We, we don't pastor a church, mm -hmm. and we've been here in actually three years now this month. Uh, we've been pastoring all of our leaders. We pastored uh, all of our missionaries, 120 plus missionaries throughout seven different countries. We help oversee their lives mm -hmm. spiritually, uh, giving them uh, direction and encouragement. I, I don't think the, the ordinary churchgoer in the States or believer in the States would really understand this, but missionaries, so many of them, when they move overseas, they many of them go through very difficult and trying times. Mm -hmm. Discouragement is probably one of the biggest challenges. Depression, mm -hmm. they have issues with uh, disciplining their children, uh, mm -hmm. issues of infidelity, sad to say, issues of conflict with uh, other missionaries. So mm -hmm. basically, Sandy and I serve here to help our missionaries stay healthy, uh, spiritually, emotionally, physically and relationally. Those are the four areas that we focus on in helping our missionaries stay focused to be able to fulfill their calling for why they came to the mission field mm -hmm. to serve. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. That's that's so important. You know, I think it's just, it's such a calling and uh, it's also a stressful calling to to leave your your homeland and you leave your family and all of a sudden you're in a, a new country learning a new language. And, and yes. uh, so that's great to have <clears throat> pastors that are helping to be a support. And uh, it's incredible. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned earlier about our uh, upcoming transition. Uh, we were invited by uh, the regional directors yeah, yeah. and the area director yeah. of uh, Asia Pacific 
uh, to consider a new assignment. And actually, we felt that God was opening a, a new door for us. Mm -hmm. So we uh, accepted their invitation. And basically, uh, as soon as the borders open here and uh, international flights begin scheduling, our plan is to uh, go back to Thailand and live in Bangkok again, but it's serving in a different role. We will serve in Bangkok in the same capacity that we are serving here. We will provide uh, pastoral care and spiritual leadership to our more than 200 missionaries wow. in five different countries. Uh, the countries are... Uh, uh, Thailand, yeah, th Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, in Vietnam. Oh, wow. And yeah. that's the area known as Peninsular Asia. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we, will do, we will be in charge of the mentoring, all the missionaries that come. Mm. We will do a lot of marriage mentoring and on field arrival coaching and, yeah. and, um, and also. Additionally, the yeah. regional director, Jeff Hartensfeld, who is the regional director of Asia Pacific, uh, we know Jeff and his wife Liz very well. They've invited us, knowing our background. Uh, we've pastored all of our ministry, you know, pretty much 40 years. Uh, Jeff has asked us to also be available for the region, which is 40 countries, to serve as interim international church pastors, meaning any of our international churches in the region where any of their pastors need to get away from their churches for a month or two or three months. Sandy and I will basically just fly into their city and we'll pastor their church for them teach, preach, disciple, and uh, assure continuity and momentum in their churches and church health so that when those missionary pastors are away, they can return to their church and just continue their pastoral ministry there. Uh, it's hard to get away from your church. You know, mm -hmm. uh, to Josh, think about leaving your church for like yeah. three months. I mean, <laughs> so that's really yeah. a challenge. So we would yeah. basically serve as interim international church pastors throughout okay. the region, which we're also very excited about oh that's so. great that is exciting wow yeah so you'll be transitioning from estonia to uh to thailand as as soon as things begin to open up hopefully and, this uh, summer yeah. yeah okay yeah. targeting july and, okay. and it's possible we're waiting again for international flights to begin scheduling that's a key component right now thailand is not receiving any international flights so we'll just wait and see. And even when that happens, we're not sure what that's even going to look like. You know, yeah. every other person and seats occupied on a plane. And depending right. on that, we'll just basically do what we have to do to get there. Yeah. 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 We were, we had planned a missions trip to Honduras this summer and we had to unfortunately cancel that. So it was uh, heartbreaking for our team, but yeah. you know, uh, just uh, look forward to when we can go again or to another country and, We've yeah. been to a few different countries. We went to Slovakia, which would be, you know, probably the closest to Estonia. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was incredible, just uh, meeting the people. We ministered amongst uh, the Roma gypsies there in, uh, in Slovakia. So it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. That was a thrill Exciting, for you yeah. all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Kofala was the one thing that we drank there. That was a very regional drink that they have in Slovakia. So what is Estonia like in the culture and maybe the food there? Well, the people, we feel like the people are very kind, very yeah. nice, um, pretty introverted until yeah. you get to know them. Yeah. Uh, the, the spiritual um, atmosphere, climate, so, yeah. climate is uh, pretty, pretty non-existent. Yeah. Yeah. A pretty atheistic country. Okay. Yeah, Still yeah. like that, that carryover from like communism type thing? Well... They don't like to compare themselves anything with Russia. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> They're own, not uh, dominated by Russia, and, and that is not a... Very proud yeah. of their heritage, and, okay. and Estonians have their own language, mm. their yeah. own culture. Uh, and they would say, uh, the Estonian culture, basically, uh, people say that they are the least religious country in the world. Mm -hmm. That's what wow. they say. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm. But so, God is doing great things here. The, he is. Uh, you know, uh, we have missionaries who have planted two churches here in the in the city of Tallinn, yeah. and one of them is the biggest Pentecostal church here in the oh, country. Wow. Yeah. In the country, okay. So Tallinn, the the country of Estonia has about uh, a million and a half, and a half people, yeah. 
Mm. And Tallinn has, uh, the, Tallinn is the capital city, which sits on the Bay of Finland. Okay. And it, uh, the eastern border of Estonia is the western border of Russia. Wow. Northern Russia. Yeah. Its size again yeah, is like right around 400. 400. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it, yeah, it, it's it's really very calm. It's easy to live here. Yeah. Uh, very peaceful. Mm -hmm. uh, the foods, you know. Um, That's your department. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> well, in, in southern Estonia, especially, you know, there's a lot of forests and um, they grow a lot of food. So pretty healthy eating. Um, yeah. But, you know, a lot of drinking, a lot of smoking, mm. which you know, negates the healthy eating a lot of times. Yeah. Um, a lot of walking trails. They love to be outdoors. Estonians yeah. love to be outdoors. Okay. Walking the trails in the forest. Very we, health We live in the forest culture, here, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. The food, uh, I mean, basically, would, it, some of it is similar to when we lived in Russia. Okay. You know, beef and uh, potatoes and... They're big on salads with goat cheese. That's one of oh, their big things yeah. here, which we actually have grown to really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's a unique right. culture. Again, Sandy it's mentioned really they're nice friendly, food. very friendly and kind people and very helpful. Yeah. Mm. yeah, we didn't plan on leaving here at all. That was not in our plans, but um, when the new leadership area director came in, um, his vision for the area did not include just one person doing the member care like we are doing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's why. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. why we're in transition. We're in transition. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. We're excited about moving back to Bangkok. And we have many friends still in Thailand where we okay. serve that know us well, and they're all excited about our return. Uh, the area director there and his wife are good friends of ours. They were members of our church in Bangkok when we pastored there. So they and we will serve alongside of them to assist them in taking care of yeah. the mission. So it's all an amazing door that God has opened for us to step back into a country that we used to live in. Yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it's kind of surreal to us when we're yeah. actually going back there. Yeah. But we're stoked about it. We really are. How how long were you in Bangkok before? Nearly six years. Okay, yeah, that's great. So the, yep. Yeah. So we're thankful for the new door. And, you know, we're in our mid-60s, 64, 65 years of age, but we feel like we're still in our 40s. We feel like that we're full of a passion and energy. We want to keep running this race and that God can still use us and we can mm -hmm. still be helpful in adding value to yeah. God's kingdom. That's why we want to keep running the yeah. race. Great. We're healthy. We're on no medications. Yeah. We've never wow. been on any medications. And and uh, thankful. just yeah. feel like this new season, you know, God's going to do something new in us and through us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. What would you say? I, I think as a pastor and, you know, uh, there are people that, you know, in your uh, season of life where, they're either looking at retirement, they're in retirement, and they're wondering, you know, some people really struggle emotionally with what that looks like, and can God still use me? And I think you're a great example that God still has a plan for us, no matter how young or how what season you you are, and maybe encourage people that are in your season of life that, that God can still use them. Absolutely. You know, we've been researching the word um, retirement in the Bible but we can't find it. <laughs> but actually, yeah, we, have a, we have a young uh, lady who came here not long after we did, so about two and a half years ago, yeah. and she's my age. Yeah, yep. And for her first time wow. serving yeah. in, wow. in ministry overseas. She yeah. and her husband were pastors all their lives, and, yeah. and she became a missionary, so... Yeah. And it's all about purpose, isn't it, Pastor Josh? When you sense a purpose, you become passionate about it. And God's not and doesn't want to put you on the shelf to collect dust. And uh, one of the newer songs that we, we've been listening to on, uh, we watch a lot of video on YouTube, and Elevation Church uh, just released a new song recently called My Testimony. Oh, and yeah. Part of the bridge, I love it. Part of the bridge, one of the bridge in the song says, uh, if I'm not dead, you're not done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just keep you're saying, like this. <laughs> if I'm not dead, you're not done. So God, you know, you're not finished with me yet. And 
I want to keep loving you and serving you and reaching people for you. And that's what drives us. And that's yeah. the fuel that uh, ignites our fire for Jesus. You know? yeah. And yeah. the regional director, when he invited us to go back to Thailand, he said, he said, there's such a need. He said, your ministry is going to be affecting those who are ministering and reaching others mm -hmm. through, throughout Asia Pacific. And yeah. when he said that, I thought, wow, you know, we all need someone behind us and somebody mm -hmm. underneath yeah. us lifting us up sometimes, you know, and someone behind us just yeah. you know, giving that, us that nudge. You can do it. You can do it. Go, you yeah. know. Yeah. And so, if that's, we can invest in them, that uh, the result of that will be that their ministry, because they're healthier in these various ways, their ministry will be more effective and more far reaching. And that's what we want to invest ourselves yeah. in doing and hopefully they can see like people our age if we can keep going on yeah. and going on you know because we feel like yeah. god still has something something more for us yes you know yeah. there's still something left for us to do his gifts yeah. and callings he never takes them back that's yeah. right yeah and so and you uh, bring such experience and wisdom i mean i think you've been to multiple countries and and multiple assignments and you pastored here in the states i think it's just, it's so uh, healthy and helpful for pastors and missionaries serving that, that to, to just learn from your experience and be, be mentored that way. So I think that's incredible. In all those years, we were mentored a lot when we were coming through the ministry, but all those years of experience, when we reflect back, Pastor Josh, we see God was molding us and shaping us and preparing us and equipping us for right now, this season mm. of life and ministry that we're serving in. God never wastes an experience in our lives. He uses the good ones and yep. he uses the not so good ones uh, for our good and yep. for his glory. So he's been shaping us as with yourself and any of us who walk in him for uh, the duration of our lives again. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll just say to those who are watching today, I, I echo what you're saying and God's not done with you. Maybe you you feel like God's done with you, you're, or you're done with you, and I think I encourage you. God's not finished. If uh, if you're not dead, God's not done. As, <laughs> as the song goes, right? That old hymn, you know. Right, I love it. Uh, we I just say, like, yeah. I go ahead. Like to encourage the people that you're talking to who feel that way. Yeah. Remember your dream. Mm -hmm. Remember what God placed in you. That very first time when you felt that nudge that God yeah. could use you, remember that dream. If it if it was a scripture, if it was a book or a, a line in a song, whatever it is, go write it down or go put it somewhere that you can always be reminded. This this was my dream, mm. and maybe you haven't feel, fulfilled that dream yet, and you you feel like you can't do it. You can, mm. because God has placed it in you, and he will empower you, he'll anoint you, and he'll equip you to just chase after that dream till you see it fulfilled, yeah, yeah. and then give you another one. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. well, how can people partner with you? Where, where can they, uh, uh, you know, if they want to support you in prayer or financially, what's the best way that, for them to connect with you? Well, for sure, number one, the highest priority and the greatest privilege that we would could receive from anyone who could be watching today is your prayer support. Mm -hmm. Your prayers on our behalf, thousands of miles away from you for uh, strength, for health, for uh, creativity in our thoughts, for our ability to speak words of wisdom and words of the spirit and words of life into the lives of the missionaries that we will be overseeing to be able to counsel them with godly advice and help to support and encourage them mm -hmm. through their lives in ministry as well. Yeah. yeah. To support us uh, monetarily or financially, I hadn't really given thought to that, honey. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can find us on Facebook, Kevin Barner, Sandy Barner. You can just reach out to us. Uh, you can email us. And uh, uh, we actually also have a web page uh, for the Assemblies of God. You could actually go to uh, assemblyofgod.org or agwm.org that's assemblies of god world missions and uh, there'll be a place for you to type in our name and do a search so uh I don't there's, have, there's a link there yeah there's a link there that will take okay. you to our page but uh our email kevin.barner 
at agmd.org. That's kevin.barner at agmd.org. Great. So, and I'll post all those links and resources. When I, when I post this video up, I'll, I'll make that, I'll put oh, those good. details in there. People can click on and, we'll and uh, check that all that out. So that's yeah. incredible. Well, can I pray for you? And then, you know, maybe I'll just have you pray for those who are watching today. And, uh, but we just want to, I want to pray for you. And anytime we have missionaries to our church, I know we're doing it a little differently today, but we love yeah. just to just end by praying for them and, and just to believe in God's, God's got his hand on you. He's going to use you. So let's just pray. Jesus, we just thank you for Kevin and for Sandy and the call of God in their life. I thank you for their example. I thank you for their passion and their heart to serve you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that the, for the reminder today that you call us and that your call is irrevocable, Lord. We just want to fulfill what you've called us to do. And so I pray your blessing upon Kevin and Sandy, I pray your protection. I pray for health. Thank you for the health that you've given them. And I, I just pray that you just continue that, Lord Jesus. Pray that they would be able to go to Thailand very soon. I pray for wisdom and creativity as a mentor, as they encourage the pastors and the missionaries uh, there in Thailand and the surrounding countries, Lord Jesus. Give them energy. Give them uh, just a uh, just effectiveness and fruitfulness in all that they do. I praise you. We thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for Pastor Josh from Faith Assembly in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, for Pastor Josh and his leadership and mm -hmm. their vision, Lord, and their heart for missions to not only uh, affect the community there in New Cumberland and the surrounding areas, but for their heartbeat, for th their desire to impact the world globally with the message of your love and your hope that comes through the good news of Jesus Christ. We ask your blessing over them that you would supply their need and everything that uh, concerns them there at Faith Assembly, uh, all of those who serve in leadership, uh, those who lead ministries, those who serve in ministries, and every aspect, knowing, Lord, that uh, our local churches uh, in the States have not met on a Sunday for quite a few weeks now, some of which have faced numerous challenges. But, Lord, you've made a way for them, and you're going to continue to make a way. And we pray that you will continue to bless them, that they will continue to be a blessing, Father. Your mm -hmm. word says in uh, Proverbs 11 and verse 25 that he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Mm -hmm. Lord, let Faith Assembly in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, be a church that continues to refresh others. And in return, Lord, you will multiply mm -hmm. back your blessings upon their congregation, expanding their ministry beyond their borders and even globally, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I just want to pray this blessing over Pastor Josh. Yes, Father. And every person in that congregation, yes, Faith Father. Assembly, that you would bless them, yes, that Jesus. you would keep them. Mm -hmm that you would make your face to shine upon them yes, and be gracious to them, that you would lift up your countenance Praise upon you. them yes, and that you would give them your perfect peace. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Thanks wow. for taking the time to be with us. And uh, just, uh, I love technology that we could do this. So. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And we just want to say a big, big thank, thank you, you again for your invitation. We've loved our time and spending to get to know you better and to share our hearts together. Great, great. And we'll, we'll stay in touch when you're itinerating, we'll, you know, and things open back up. We'd love to meet you in person and have you come and share. So uh, yeah, you know, we'll love stay connected that way. So Face-to-face -face is much better than face-to-face -face book. You know? Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, All right. Well, God bless you guys and uh, just pray God's best for you. Amen. Thank you, same. Thank you, you so much. Thank you again. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.